Okay, all right. Well, welcome everyone. I'm going to be using a 16 by 20 canvas. Yours is a little smaller, but that's okay. I'm just using a bigger one so you can see it. I'm going to be using a large, medium, and small brush. My large and medium are flat brushes. My small is a round, but as long as you have a variety of brushes, pretty much anything will do. And I'll tell you exactly what kind would be helpful for each step. I also have some water in a jar. You can put yours in a container, whatever you want. And I've got some paints on my canvas. I'm gonna be, I mean, on my palette, which is just a paper plate. I'm gonna be using blue, red, and yellow, and then black and white. That's it. And all right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, because Denver is so dry, and this is what you might've seen other people doing already, if they've painted with us before, because Denver is so dry, I like to put water on my canvas before I start painting. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, the humidity is really low in Denver. And if you're in a more humid place, like if you're in Florida or Louisiana or Indonesia, or pick a place that's humid, you probably don't need to do this. But in Denver, our air is very dry. And so by putting a little water on our canvas, it helps us keep the paint um, from drying out too quickly. Acrylic paints are made out of water and crushed up pigment and a binder that's kind of like glue. And it cleans up with soap and water when you're doing it. But then after it's dry, it won't clean up. It'll be permanent. So be careful where you get it. Be sure to wear your apron. If you get any on you, blot it with a clean paper towel, pull it out, and then rub some concentrated dish soap onto the spot and put it in the washing machine. Put those clothes in the washing machine. If you get it on your carpet, same thing. Blot it. Don't rub it in. Put some dish soap on. Try to clean it with some hot water and say a prayer. If you get it on your computer, those things might work. Also, a little rubbing alcohol, maybe. If you get it on your cat or your dog, you're going to have to give them a bath. All right. Okay, so uh, we've got water on our canvas. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in this background sky here. See that sky? There's not much of it. We'll just put some in at the bottom few inch or the top few inches of our canvas, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pick up my biggest flat brush. I'm gonna put white on one side and I'm gonna put blue on the other side. And then I'm just gonna scribble. I'm gonna scribble on about the first three inches. And when I scribble with white on one side and blue on the other, what that does, look at the texture I'm getting. It makes clouds for me and I don't even have to put them on there myself. It's just easy. They just appear because I scribbled. So I know that Parsons is an engineering group, but I think that's what Deb told me. And so if you are a person, a lot of engineers are this way, who is very meticulous and likes things super neat, this part might be a little challenging for you, okay? That's okay. Just remember, we want it to be messy and sloppy because a real sky has clouds that are dancing around. They might be slow dancing or they might be fast dancing, but they're just, they're just waltzing in the sky. And so we want movement and we get that when we, Scribble. Scribble on that white and blue. Make it choppy and messy. And you could just kind of pull it across the bottom maybe. You need, need to spread it out a little more. Another thing is I am painting the tops and the sides of my canvas as well. And I'm doing that because that's called a gallery wrap. And when you paint all the way around the tops and the sides and the bottom like this, you won't need a frame because your, can't, your painting just wraps around. 
So that'll save you money if you don't need a frame. You can still put it in a frame. I like to think after I win the lottery someday, I'm gonna put all my art in nice frames. But in the meantime, you don't need a frame if you create a gallery wrap, if you paint around the tops and sides. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you mountains. It's okay that this isn't dry, we can paint over it. Uh, the way we're gonna do it, we can paint over this. And I'm going to show you how to uh, put on your mountains, okay? All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small round brush and I'm gonna use it like I would a pencil because I'm just gonna draw on the tips of the mountains so I can see where they're gonna be. And so I'm gonna dip that small round brush in some white paint. And then I'm going to go up into my clouds. Notice that there's not a lot of sky back here. The mountains are very tall in this painting. So I'm going to go into my sky to put on my mountain peak. And I'm gonna be covering up some of my sky. That's okay. We'll know it's back there behind the mountain. And what I wanna show you is that this mountain peak is a little closer to the right than halfway. We're not gonna put it exactly halfway in the painting. Um, like if this right halfway would be right, right there, I'm gonna move it over a little bit to the right because when, th when you're painting nature, things that are not symmetrical look more natural. So we don't want things to be too perfect. Just remember, don't do anything too perfect in this painting. It's impressionistic, not realistic. And what that means is it's gonna look better if it's not perfect, okay? That's the style. So I'm gonna make a peak like that. I'm not gonna make it too, too pointy. It's not the Matterhorn, it's a mountain in Colorado. But if you wanna make it pointier and you know, mountains in another country, that's okay, or another state, that's all right. You do you, you do what makes you happy. All right, so I've got one there. Then I'm gonna have another small one here. Or maybe you can make it bigger, it doesn't really matter. Yours isn't gonna look exactly like mine and mine's not gonna look exactly like the sample. And that's what's great about painting. We'll come down a little bit lower on that one. Then I'm gonna go up and just do, make a half a mountain right there. Just one side. We know that it, it'll continue. This is just a picture. And wherever that half of the mountain is, you just can't see it, but it's there. I don't think my blue paint is dry yet because it's just turning blue. Okay, no problem. Don't worry. Can you still see it yourself? Yeah. Okay, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And then we're just sketching it on so we know where they're going to be. I'm going to pull this side lower. See, I pulled that side lower than that side. And then from the middle of this line, I'm going to make another peak, but it's not as tall. Not as tall, but it's wider. And I'm gonna pull it to the left, right off the side. So what I've got is a variety of mountain peaks and they're not perfect. They're not, we don't want them to look like Charlie Brown's shirt. We don't want perfect teepees that look exactly the same. And like I said, if yours don't look like mine, that's okay. That's fine, no worries. What I want you to look at, remember we are talking about impressionistic? Do you see all the colors in that mountain? There's rust and there's green and there's white and there's black and there's brown. 
There's all kinds of colors in there. It's not neat and it's not perfect. And there are no, like we're not painting little trees or it's just kind of messy and choppy. And we like that. And I'll tell you what, or well, I like that because from a distance, it looks better than it does up close. And that's what we're going for. That's the impressionistic way. Monet, when he painted in France, uh, that's where he lived, um, they accused him of not painting, uh, finishing a painting. They said, all you did was the underpainting because they were used to seeing things perfect in the realistic style and realism. And he said, oh no, I'm not painting a mountain exactly or a plant or a flower exactly the way it looks. What I'm painting is your memory of it after you look away. Interesting. So it's a dis different style of painting. So just remember, we're gonna keep it loose and a little sloppy on purpose, okay? All right, so I'm gonna make some brown. And so I'll tell you how you to make brown. We're only gonna use a little tiny bit of brown. So don't mix all your colors together. I know when I have kids camp in here, um, <laughs> kids love to just right from the start, mix all their colors together. Let's not do that, okay? Let's just mix a little bit at a time uh, so we can save some of it. I'm gonna mix a little blue and a little red. And when I say a little, like, you know what a pinto bean is? Or a um, June bug? And you want us to use a big brush? I'm gonna use a medium flat. Thanks for asking. Okay. And then I'm gonna pick up a little yellow. So brown is a little red and a little yellow and a little blue mixed together. But look at how little I'm making. I'm not making very much of it because I just wanna go easy. I'm just going easy. I don't wanna waste all my paint and then not have any fresh color. So when I mix colors, I just do a little at a time. I can always come back in and make more. It's not like I'm painting a wall and it has to match perfectly. All right. And if it has a little bit of streaks in it, that's even better for this painting. All right, so what I'm gonna do, yeah, go ahead. Um, can you scoot your blue and white painting a bit to the right? Because I can't see the very left edge. Sure. That's it. That is the edge right there. Okay. Thanks. And oh. we're making rust. Um, nope, we're making brown. So a little red, a little yellow, and a little blue together make brown. But just in small quantities, just use like a pinto bean size of each. If you don't know what a pinto bean is, this is for the kids, a jelly bean size of each. A small jelly bean, a jelly belly of yellow, a jelly belly of red, and a jelly belly of blue, okay? And then swirl them together just that little bit. And if it doesn't mix perfectly, that's okay, because this mountain has a lot of colors in it. That'll be great. So we're just making a little bit of brown, okay? All right. And then from the top of this peak, I'm going to scribble on a little bit of brown. You can cover that white line up. And if it mixes with your blue, that's fine. Don't worry about it. There's blue in it anyway. Is it covering the line? Some of them. And then from the top of this peak, do the same thing and just kind of scribble it. Don't make it perfect. Don't make it perfect, okay? And I can scribble on a little bit more if I want a little bit more. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Scribble, scribble, scribble. When, if I don't make it perfect, there's another advantage to that. Then I have bumps on the side and bumps are good because real mountains have bumps. If you make things too smooth and too straight, it'll, it won't look real. Instead, it will start to look like Disney World and that doesn't look real. So notice how choppy and messy my lines are. That's what I want. And actually, let's pull those down quite a bit because these are big mountains. I forgot how big these are. 
I'm scribbling, I'm scribbling. There's nothing neat about this painting. And I can paint it right off to the side of the painting too. Oh, what the heck, let's do this one too. Whatever you do, don't make each one exactly the same. Mess it up a little. Keep it messy, keep it a scribble. If it's hard for you to be this messy, have a beer, okay? Or a glass of wine, that'll help. If you have one, you're gonna be a lot less inhibited and your painting will turn out better. If you have two, then you're gonna thank your Michelangelo and that's fun, that's fun too. If you have three, you can bring it into me at the studio and I'll help you fix it, okay? All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that brown alone. I'm gonna use some of it later, right? But I'm gonna mix up a little bit of green and I can use my brush if it's not dirty, but go ahead and wash it if it's dirty. Um, and green is basically, I'm just gonna take a jelly belly size of side of yellow and then a jelly belly size of blue and mix those together. I'm not mixing all my white, or pardon me, all my yellow and all my blue. I like to just mix a little at a time because I don't like to waste paint. All right, so I've got some green. See the green there? It's a little yellow, it's a little blue, and it's, I did it with my medium flat brush. So I've got green on my brush. Hopefully you guys made green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. And then underneath where I put the brown, but not, you know, just more in the middle, I'm gonna scribble on some green. And I'm gonna let it mix with whatever is up there. So I'm gonna let it mix a little with that brown. And I'm scribbling, I'm scribbling. Be messy. It's funny when I have kids in here and I tell them, go ahead, be messy. They look so tentative. But then when they believe me, man, they, they let loose. Let loose. You can't let loose when you paint. When can you, right? Scribble, scribble it. Woohoo. So we scribbled on some brown, we scribbled on some green, and next to it, I'm gonna scribble on some red, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I took a little of that brown that I made before, and I mixed it into some red, so it makes like a burgundy color or, ru or rust, but it's dark, it's a dark, dark red. So I just took that, a little of that brown, a little more red, Mixed it together. And then I can scribble it in. But here's the thing, whatever you do, let these colors mix because what we don't want is we don't want straight lines, okay? We don't want it to look like a red and green and brown candy cane, okay? So let those colors mix a bit, make it scribbly. Okay, make it scribbly. We can go in and define the mountains more after we uh, scribble them on. Um, but for this step, keep it scribbly, okay? We're just filling in, we're just filling our mountains with those colors um, in a scribbly kind of way. The first layer, the brown, just divided them up. Um, but it's okay if they kind of, you can't really tell where one starts, one stops, that's okay. We're gonna be adding some highlights to this so that they stand out a little more, okay? And so that they're lighter. I'm gonna bring these down a little bit lower because I just remember this is a pretty tall mountain. And let those colors just mix and mingle a little bit, okay? 
Woo, free, be free, be free. Can't be free here, where can you be, right? Be free. Okay. Now, like I said, we're gonna put some highlights on those so that they'll be a little better defined. But for now, we're just putting in some of those colors to make it interesting. So if you are very concerned about how imperfect yours is, first of all, remember that's the instruction was to be imperfect, okay? So okay. if you're doing that, you're ahead of the game. The other thing is if you're holding it like a pencil, you're gonna be here until a week from Tuesday. Don't do that, okay? Because you're never gonna get a loose painting if you're holding it like a pencil. And um, engineers tend to do that a lot. So do accountants, so do moms, so do anyone who, people who schedule people, anyone who's um, meticulous, they tend to hold their brush down here and that will take them forever, okay? For this kind of loose painting, we wanna pull way back on the brush, like on. we're conducting an orchestra, okay? That's what I was doing, so. All right, now, if you have any lines, any hard lines in your painting, where it looks like you you stack the books on a bookshelf, I want you to take a dirty brush when your paint, if your paints are half dry, only do this if your paints are half dry, okay? If they're still really, really, really wet, wait a bit. But if they're half dry, mess it up a little more. If they're half dry, if they're half dry. We want this to not look like stacked books, okay? Now, what do I mean by, is it half dry? This painting is totally dry, of course, because it's an old painting, so it's matte. There's no shine on it. This one, it's wet where I can see a shine. So any place that you can see it shimmer in a light, that means it's wet. So up here, it's dry. I don't see any shine up here in the sky. But down farther, like this is dry. There's no shine there. There are parts that are shiny. So any place, if it's half dry and half wet, meaning there's some shine, but not everywhere, then look at your painting. And if it looks like stacked books. Pretty, yours is heavy. Yours is heavy. If it looks too neat and it's half dry, then use your dry brush and just mess it up a little. We job. want those colors to mix and blend. Um, somebody, I'm hearing them really loud, like not loud, but I mean, um, everything. So if you would go ahead and mute, um, unless you're asking a question, that'd be awesome. But like I said, if it's, if it looks too neat and too orderly and too straight, wait till it's half dry and then mess it up. Okay. I'm using a dry brush and just messing it up a little bit. But not everyone needs to mess it. If yours is wet all over and it's already messy, don't do what I'm doing. But it depends on your, you know, if, if you made it too neat, then you can do that, okay? Does that make sense? I hope so. My painting's looking pretty dry compared to, I mean, dark compared to the other one, but that's okay. We're gonna lighten it up with some highlights in a minute. I'm gonna, I know you guys are probably still working on this and that's okay, but I am gonna show you the next step because it's easy and it, because it is similar to the last one. Do you remember that green we made before? I'm gonna take some of that green. You know how to make more if you need more. And then I'm just gonna make a medium sized mountain here. Uh, hold on. Those are tall and now I want medium. So I just mixing up a little more green and then I'm putting it here. It's kind of like a foothill down here. It's a foothill, but it's not really round and it's it's a little got little angular hills like little baby mountains and I'm putting those on in just plain old green so if you're someone who has a hard time 
painting this messy style, use a bigger brush than you normally would. It'll kind of force you to. If you're someone who loves to make a mess and <laughs> is finished in five minutes because you did it so messy, then you might want to use a smaller brush to slow you down. Oh, by the way, on those um, foothills at the top, I'm going to put, I'm going to outline them a little bit with a little red. I know that looks silly. That sounds funny, but it's going to define them a little bit more. And then we're going to highlight on top of that. I, I'm showing you that mountain to show you how messy those colors are. Okay. I'm going to make the teeny tiniest amount of pale blue that I can. I'm popping in just the tips of my medium flat brush, just the tip with a little tiny bit of white. I don't want to make much. I only want to make about a jelly bean amount of light blue. I don't need much. Just a little bit of light blue. And I make that by mixing a little white, little blue, okay? It's basically the same color as our sky, right? I mean, sort of, maybe a little lighter than that. And on the right side of each mountain, on the right side, okay, the right, on the right, I'm going to, oh, that's a little too blue, sorry, hold on. I'll make it a little darker than that. That's a little too bright. All right, on the, on the right side of each mountain, I'm gonna just kind of scribble on, just start at the peak and scribble down, kind of like you just poured, some green, some blue lava on the top, but only on the right side. I'm gonna do it on this side too. But start in the peak and then just do this side. We're just adding another dimension, another color. And it's helping us define those mountains again. Does this painting make great sense? No, it's very impressionistic. And that's, that is a perfect style for engineers and their families because I have, um, by the way, my husband has a PhD in engineering. And then I have a son who's an engineer. And I have another son who is getting his second master's in math. And then uh, another son in biology. So uh, those of us who uh, are either in STEM fields or live with people in some fields, sometimes we need paintings like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with that scribbly motion down here on one side of our foothill. Now my foothill on this side is still wet and so it's mixing in and I'm gonna love that actually. You know that, you ever see that um, HGTV show love it or list it, and they have to decide if they want to list their house or um, stay in it and love it. Well, I didn't intend for those colors to mix so much, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it and leave it alone. So anyway, on these little foothills, I'm just scribbling on a little of that lighter color on the right side of those two. It's just adding a little highlight. That's all it's doing. And it's a scribble. It's a scribble. I'm letting that just mix a little. Dang, this is crazy painting. Just giving a little, little uh, dimension to it. That's all it's doing. That's a little bright. I'm gonna add a little. I am more of a meticulous kind of painter. And so these, these um, I am telling these tips to myself because this is not normally my style, uh, but it's good. It's good practice. It's good to do this sometimes and just kind of let, let go. Let go. Especially now during the pandemic. It's not, it's nice to just let go and be free. Not worry about your anything.
We'll do one more step before we take a break, okay? And it's not a big step. I know you're not, probably not ready, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you because then when, whenever you are ready, I want you to take a break, okay? This is a lot. I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny detail brush uh, with some white paint on it. And I'm going to just put on some little bits of snow drips. And it's on that blue paint that I just put on. And so it's mixing in, that's okay. And I'm doing it with white. And I'll do it a little on both sides. It's defining the peaks of my mountains again, and I'm scribbling it. I'm just scribbling it. It's just defining those peaks, giving them a little bit of snow at the top. And it's scribbled. Kind of like a clown collar. Hopefully you're not afraid of clowns. I didn't just trigger you, but you know how those clowns have those kind of triangular things coming off their collars, kind of like that, but not, not as perfect as that. Anything that looks perfect, I'm gonna mess up deliberately. I'll go back in and mess it up. I don't know anything perfect. Remember, don't hold your brush like a pencil. Hold it way back here so you can really get a nice scribble going. The messier, the better. While it's still wet, I like to mess it up. I don't want any straight lines anywhere. So basically with this lighter color, it's white, but it's kind of blending with whatever else is still wet there. That's providing definition for the top of the mountains and lightening up the whole thing a little bit because this is lighter. My brush is dry and I'm just messing it up so that it, I don't want anything too perfect here. I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness to this, these foothills too. It's too blue, add a little green. So Colorado, the word Colorado is, means the color red. And on our state uh, sign that people see when they first get here, it says, welcome to colorful Colorado. And this painting is definitely in that theme. All kinds of colors, 
all kinds of colors. We don't know where all those colors are coming from. Maybe it's from far away trees. Maybe it's from light hitting what's left of the snow. Maybe it's wildflowers far in the distance. We don't really know, but that's the beauty of an impressionistic painting. We don't really care either. We're just putting on the colors and thinking about the shapes, but not making anything too perfectly and letting the colors mix and mingle a little bit. It's a nice party, everybody's mingling. Now, doesn't really matter what it looks like up close. I'm gonna step back five feet and I'm gonna see mine from five feet away. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with mine from five feet away, but what I did notice was I can't see my foothills from five feet away. They just don't even show up. So I'm gonna work harder. I need you to get up and look at your painting from at least five feet away, and I'll tell you why. You can't see it from up close. You just can't, you just can't. You have to trust me on this one. It's, it's, uh, when you look at a Monet or a Van Gogh in a museum, they don't let you stand really close to it. And part of that's for security, but there's another good reason for it too. Another part of that, I just put on some very thinned out white just to lighten mine up a little bit. It's like a white glaze I made with water and white, just to lighten those foothills up a bit. Anyway, you can't see your painting from um, close up because the, the distance for an impressionistic painting where it's supposed to look good is five to 10 feet away. So if you go see their work in a museum, they're gonna tell you to back up. One, because they're nervous, but two, because you're not supposed to put your nose in the painting to see it. it they look terrible. If you've ever been to any of the uh, museums in Europe where lots of Van Goghs and Monets are, are um, on display or seen the Monets at the, uh, how, at the um, museum in Denver, same thing. They look terrible from up close. They're not supposed to look good from up close. They're supposed to look good from far away. So I want you to give your painting the same respect that you would if it were of Monet or Van Gogh. And I want you to stand up and look at it from at least five feet away, as far away as you can get from it in your, the room that you're in, okay? Not a polite request, but uh, required, okay? Thank you so much. All right. I'm experimenting with colors a little bit in my foothills just to get them to show up again because they stopped showing up. Scribbling on some colors. Okay, I'm gonna look at mine again from five feet away. I wanna be able to see that I have mountains and I have foothills. You'll notice that in this one, their foothills, it's pretty much just one big foothill where I have smaller ones and they have a lot of white sitting on top of that one. It doesn't really matter. Remember I told you everyone's is gonna look a little bit different and that's okay. My foothills looked definitely different than theirs and that's okay, that's okay. Yours is gonna look different than mine too and that's fine. All right, but do get up and look at yours from five feet away. And remember, you can always ask the people you're painting with too. And they're obligated to be very nice in their response. Okay? None of us are Monet or Van Gogh. We're all learning. So be kind. Ask, ask people. What do you think? 
Sometimes that helps. A little feedback from our friends. All right, so everybody get up, look at it if you haven't already, and then let's let this dry, okay? All right, so um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a medium flat brush and make sure it's clean. Always clean your brushes in between steps, okay? Lots of swishing, lots of swishing. I always tell the kids, swishy, swishy like a fishy. Do all your cleaning with just swishing, okay, in the water. And then just, then you only have to tap on the napkin to see if it's clean. So I'm gonna make some more green and that's yellow plus blue. Don't use all your yellow, of course, don't use all your blue, but make some more green. There's my more green. And then I'm gonna come in and woo, I'm gonna have some fun. If those were foothills, I don't know what these are. These are like smaller. This is grass, it's more like a meadow, but it's not flat. We're gonna put a foreground in, but I'm deliberately not making it straight. I don't want anything straight. Nice, happy green. Happy, happy. And then you can like pretend you're um, uh, Julie Andrews and seeing the hills are alive with the sound of music. Why not? Believe me, you don't want me to sing. All right, and we're gonna bring that down almost to the bottom. Oh, what the heck? Let's just bring it down to the bottom. Woohoo! How fun! Be free. Choppy, messy. Choppy, messy. Don't make it. Don't make it neat. And if your blue and your yellow aren't perfectly mixed, even better, because then you get lots of nice texture and variety in your grass. This is where the deer and the antelope play, right? This is where they all come and hang out and have a little deer party. And you can use any strokes on this. You can scribble it, you can go back and forth, but don't make it neat, don't make it straight. I wanna see texture in that grass. I wanna see it messy, messy, messy. And then I'm gonna come down here, paint the bottom of it. And I'm gonna paint the bottom of it here too. Remember that's the gallery wrap. When we paint the tops and the sides and the bottoms, then we can hang it on a wall. We used to have a teacher here who would say, take down your wedding picture and your high school graduate diploma mm -hmm. and your, oops, college <laughs> diploma. And your family probably wouldn't like that too much, but, and then replace all of that with your paint, with your own beautiful masterpiece, right? You can make it a little lighter. I noticed that my whole painting is a lot darker than the original. I don't know why. That was just the mood I was in, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I'm making mine a little bit lighter so you can see it. Oh, that's too light. But you get the idea, right? Like they say, like uh, Shrek said, was it Shrek or donkey? It was donkey. Gotta have layers. We got layers in this painting. If, if yours is taking a long time, use a bigger brush. Use the biggest brush you have for that step, okay? All right, so I took my, remember that green we made? I took a big scoop of blue and I'm mixing that into that green. I want a very dark green. Very dark. So enough blue that you have a very dark green, okay? And then from the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna flick up. Just like if you've ever put on mascara before, it's the same motion. I set it at the base and flick up. 
And what this is doing is it's painting those close up grasses. So lots, lots of that dark, dark green paint and then flick up, just flick. And it's gonna go in different directions when you flick and that's good. Just a fast flick. And that's giving me those close up grasses. Because you have close up flowers there. I just noticed that with these trees, we've got a scale problem there, but we'll fix that. So just flick up from the bottom. Make sure it's good and dark so it, it's darker than what you were putting on before. If what you were putting on before is too dark and you can't get it any darker by adding blue, you can add a tiny bit of black. Whatever it takes to make it a little darker. And it's just a flick because when you flick it like that, you get these uneven things that show grass, close up of grass. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna fix, fix something on my trees because I've got a scale issue there. I added those trees just before we started because um, the organizer said you wanted to mash up and the other painting had trees. Um, and that scale is off, so I'm gonna fix it. Make this tree bigger. You guys do the grass while I fix this. Okay, y'all, I just want you to know I can make good grass. Can't make the rest of my painting is what I'd like, but I can make some good grass. <laughs> I agree, the grass is the best thing on my photo right now, <laughs> my painting. <laughs> I can call, I was just talking to Jade, I go, wow, this grass looks good. <laughs> That's right so on. <laughs> That sounds really funny. Well, hallelujah to grass is all I can say. All right. Maybe it does, it works. Okay, so in this painting, we have flowers that, um, well, let me just ask, does anyone need any more time on the grass? We're good? Okay, good. Um, because I wanna keep moving. So in the back here, there's a lot going on in this painting. Let me just say that, there's a lot going on in this painting. So what I did is, 
I just took uh, a medium flat. You could also use a small round. It doesn't really matter. I'm just mixed a little tiny bit of white, a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and made this peachy color. See that peach? And I just made a little tiny bit. And in this painting, there's just a little bit of peach kind of scribbled in on the foothills a little bit. And I think what that is, I think those are some faraway wildflowers maybe. But again, everything about this painting is so loose. One more time on the peach, it's white. Sure, a little white, a little red, a little yellow. It's okay. basically a, a, a add white to orange, right? So a little red, a little yellow, and then add white and you get a peachy color. You also have a bit of peachy color on the top of the mountains. I, I think that's really just dry why. Colorado grasses. Go ahead, what's that? I think that's just dry Colorado grasses. Ah, maybe that's what it is. There you go. See, there's a reason you guys are engineers and scientists and whatever, right? Smart folks, you are smart. That was great, good comment, I like it. It just adds a little bit of, of peach to the painting. I'm not quite sure why, but I want to honor the original artist and just throw some on there. A little bit in the grass up there too. But very messy, just a little bit. If your um, grass is really wet, you can fan it with something, grab a piece of junk mail or whatever's laying around and fan it and try to dry your grasses a bit. We're gonna be painting some white trees over that. So we do want our grasses to, to at least be half dry. So there's, it's set. When acrylic paint is about half dry, it does set a little bit and you can paint over it. But if it's soaking wet, then we'll have minty trees. So. I want to have it dry at least a bit. Another way to dry your painting is you can pick it up and just wave it around. That works really, really well. Whoa, <laughs> away from your easel. Uh, that works really well, especially in this dry climate. Or you can put it in front of a hair dryer or a fan. But I'm just going to wave it around a few minutes and a minute or two, and then my grass will be dry. I can plant my trees. There's a lot of steps in this painting. This is one of the paintings that has the most steps. Um, so I want to be want to be uh, sensitive to your time. So. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next step. And if you're not there yet, don't worry, you can keep waving your painting. So basically for these aspens, now we had a scale issue. And what scale means is the size of things compared to the size of other things, right? So the mountains can be far away. That's like when you're looking out your window. But these grasses are close up, right? And the flowers are close up in this painting. So I had to make these like, these are like, either baby trees. Um, yeah, they're probably just baby aspen trees. So I'm gonna make them big, wide. And I'm gonna make them near the edges of my painting. I'm just taking the biggest flat brush I have and just pulling up white paint. And I'm actually not being fussy about how neat it is. Or, now see my grass was about half dry, so I was able to do that. If your grass isn't at least half dry, you'll just get a minty tree. So make sure your grass is about half dry or more. Okay, so I'm just pulling up and notice that this is at a slant. My trees don't have to be perfect. In fact, 
nothing in nature should be perfect or straight because nature is never perfect and it's never straight. In fact, we could even make this a little wider. Because of the size of these flowers, these have to be like baby trees, but they're nice and wide, okay? And then over here, same thing. And this just, we, the original painting, and you'll see in the little icon on the computer, didn't have these. So if you don't want them, don't do it. But the reason I put them in is because um, we talked about uh, when we were planning this event, we talked about having it be a little combination of two paintings. You don't need to do this step. And if you don't want to, don't do it. It does add a little more time to it. But I think it also frames the painting, which is kind of cool, actually. So I put that white on with my fat brush and I did get a little wet paint in it. And you know what? I don't care because real, um, the white out in nature and the snow or in trees will have reflections from other colors around it. So if it gets a little paint, colored paint in it, it's not the end of the world. It's actually just fine. And then I'm gonna show you a card trick. Woohoo! And what I mean by a card trick is I need everyone to find a piece of cardboard. You can take a flap off of your pizza box or you can take a business card that you don't need anymore. But I need everyone to find a little piece of cardboard if you're doing these trees. And we're, I'm gonna show you how to paint with a card, with a little piece of cardboard. This is my favorite trick. You're gonna love this. So everybody find a little piece of cardboard. You don't need it to be as big as a business card. It could be this big, half a business card. But we do need to have one straight side. Okay, and paper doesn't really work because it's too thin. It has to be cardboard, cardstock. Um, I've used junk mail before or half a business card or flap on a cereal box or a pizza box. They all work. So once you get your two trunks on, go ahead and grab a little piece of cardboard, okay? Still look like a postcard of Colorado by the time we're done. So these trees in Colorado are called aspens, right? Uh, they're aspens, but in other states, they have trees that look similar to these. Back east, they have birch trees and uh, birch trees look very similar. The only th thing that's different is you can kind of peel off the bark like paper. Um, I grew up in Michigan, there are a lot of birch trees there. and uh, but. From a distance, they look just like aspens. So this technique works really well for birch trees or aspens. Aspens are our state tree. <coughs> oh, wait a minute, no, that's not true. The Colorado blue spruce, I think is. But anyway, we have a ton of aspens, as you know. I think that glass of wine went to my head. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I have my half a business card. I'm gonna dip it, just dip it into some black paint. So just the tip of it has a little bit of black paint on it. Like a, like a fine black stripe. Then I'm gonna steady my hand somehow, right? And then I'm going to Tap the side of the tree, oops. tap the side of the tree and pull across. Isn't that cool? And then I'm gonna just go up the tree, pulling across. Is that cool or what? I was at Cherry Creek Arts Festival once and with my husband and we saw a painting of aspen trees. It was a giant painting 
had fall colors and aspen trees, um, but it was about seven feet by 10 feet. And it was in a gallery in Cherry Creek. They wanted $10,000 for that painting. And I could tell by looking at it, it was done with a painter's knife. Using a business card or a piece of cardboard is exactly like the point, either side. Okay. Just tap it on the side and then just be careful that you don't pull it wider than the tree, right? And what it does is it creates those scars that are on the tree. And then if, if that's too black and I don't like it, easy fix. I just tap it in white. Same thing, just right over it. I can tap it in white and then I can go over the black and it just makes another cool layer. And I can actually do that from both sides. So there's scars on both sides of it. And then I could take my business card and I could lay it a little bit flatter and then just pull up and make some twigs. How cool is that? Or you could do that with your brush. If that's too hard, do it with your brush. But it's just using whatever paint was left over on by holding a little flatter. That's my $10,000 card trick. So those of you who said you could, you've never made any money in your art. Well, maybe you didn't sell aspen trees. Apparently they're a big seller here. Just take down your garage door and paint on that, right? I love that trick. That's my favorite trick. This, you know, doing it with the card this way, the twigs, it's kind of hard. I would recommend, unless, you know, just picking it up with a small round brush and you can just, you know, create some more branches. First with white and then you can put a little black over it to make it a little gray. That also works. But basically I'm just adding some branches so they don't look just plain. And then what that leaves us is a frame. See how that nicely frames? I don't know if you've ever been up to Sapphire Point. It's this most, it's just this really lovely, beautiful place um, in Dillon. It's up on a hill and it has a hiking trail and lots of chipmunks are there. It's like, you know, the place I remember most when my kids were little, just, you know, 10,000 chipmunks begging to be fed there. Um, but between these trees, there's this amazing view of Lake Dillon and the mountains behind it. This is what it reminds me of. The trees frame the painting. So basically you have this beautiful painting and if you need to go catch a show, you can go stop there. It's beautiful already, right? All right, so I'm gonna show you, see this big red flower here? I believe that's called Indian paintbrush. Correct. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the smallest round brush I have, and I'm gonna dip it in just a tiny amount of black paint. I'm gonna use it like ink. And then I'm going to just pull up a line. Whoop. Oh, there's my bravery test. And then I'm gonna pull up another couple of lines going in a slightly different direction. These are the stems. I want the middle one to be taller. And then the two on the outside to be a little shorter. Looks like there's one behind the tree over there, but since my tree is all the way over, I can just put one in here. Excuse me. So I'm going to take my red and my medium flat brush, which I love. Obviously, these get worked. And I'm going to take the tiniest amount of black I could possibly take, just the tiniest amount. Whatever a ladybug could drag in on his feet if he was playing in the mud, just the tiniest amount. If you get too much, just wipe it on the side. And then I would take some red, but a lot more red than black. And I'm just mixing a little bit of black into a little blob of red so that I have burgundy or wine color. And then I'll put it on both sides. That's gonna be 
And then I'm gonna chisel my brush. What I mean by chisel is I'm gonna kind of pet it on the side like that because I want the paint, the bristles to be loaded with paint, but I don't want any clumps. At the same time, it's loading the brush and it's also removing clumps, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna flick up at an angle going up toward the sky, like a feather. It's like a feather. You can start on whichever one you want, but oops, they are gonna overlap probably. So depending on how close you put them together. I'm doing, I'm not doing them uh, completely heavy um, with that burgundy color because I'm gonna come back in after that dry and just put a few with brighter red. So the first little bunch I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that burgundy color. I'll let that dry and I'll come in and put a few more with just bright red on top and that'll be the ones in the front. Sounds like we have some hikers in the crowd or is that the geology people? I think there's lots of hikers in the crowd. Nice, nice. So let's let that burgundy dry. We'll come back in with some brighter red later and just put in the brighter ones after those dry, okay? This painting had more steps than any painting I've done in a really long time. But you guys are really doing a fantastic job and thank you for your patience um, in that it went over a bit. The rest of the flowers are easy, but you'll need to clean your brushes in between for different colors. And what I mean by easy is I'll take that burgundy color and I'll just show you. The rest of these flowers are basically the shape of a daisy. I don't know these red ones. I don't know, and even, yeah, I don't know what they are. If they're wild daisies in Colorado, I have no idea but that's what we're painting. Basically, we're just painting five, starting from the center and flicking out five little, oh, you know what? I forgot this Indian paintbrush over here. Sorry, whoops, whoops, whoops. Let me quickly put that on. Forgot about that guy. All right, anyway, so these, these ones that look like daisies, they're just five, five little things, almost like a starfish. And I'll put a, three on that side, maybe three on this side. Just start in the center and flick out. Then I let those dry. And then later in a couple of minutes, I'll come back in and put a little white or yellow center in a circle and that's it. Those are easy. In this painting, even though those might be columbines just so that we're not here all night, they made their lavender flowers just like a daisy. So lavender is white, plus a little red, plus a little blue, but it's clean. So I'm gonna take some from a clean spot. So it's more white this time. So lavender is a little red, a little blue, that makes purple, and then you add white to it. And if your palette's like mine, it's hard to find a clean spot. But make sure your brushes are really clean if you're making lavender, because it's, it's a very pure color. It gets messed up easily. So you want clean brushes and clean spot on your plate for lavender, okay? And they just made their lavender flowers the same way as they did their little red ones. And you don't have to make all five petals show because they wouldn't in nature. In fact, they'd be kind of messed up like that one because the wind's blowing or gravity's happening. So they don't have to be perfect. And in fact, if they're not perfect, they're, they look better. So I'm just gonna put those, I'm gonna let it 
so what's next for me is I'm gonna let all this dry a minute. I'm gonna just put in centers on my flowers, another layer on my paintbrush, on my Indian paintbrush, this plant, and then I am done. Woohoo! Thank you again for your patience tonight. Are we still gonna do the leaves on the trees though? Oh yeah, 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 let's do that. Remember that green we had? Oh, that's the super easiest thing you've ever done. Remember that green we made before? Just green, clean your brush, of course. And then they're just little flicks with a medium flat brush. This poor medium flat brush, it, it, it's been worked out tonight. But you can use a large flat brush. And notice that I'm not putting it only on the branches, I'm putting it around the branches a little out from the tree because they're, those branches, those leaves might be attached to stems or, or uh, twigs that are too small for us to see in this painting. So make sure that you spread your leaves around and don't make them just like little caterpillars on your, stuck to your branches. Have them come out a little bit. They're just, this is called stippling when you just touch your brush to the canvas, you just kind of pop them on. That's how we do a lot of leaves, just stippling. And I'm sorry to go backwards, but what did what color did you mix with the red for the ferns? Yeah, no problem. Um, a little bit of black, just a tiny black. bit of black. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. That just made it um, darker. When you want to make a color darker, it's usually adding black or blue, but blue would have made a purple, so we didn't want to go there. When you want to make something lighter, you usually add white or yellow, but it just depends on what color you're going for. Anyway, but for these green leaves, bring them out away from the tree a bit. And if you ran out of green, it's just yellow and blue, remember. Oh, this is a happy painting. It's got everything. All right, so this is dry. I have that dark red. Now I can go back in with some brighter red. If your red doesn't show up well, you can add the smallest amount of white to it, just a tiny, tiny bit. And it won't change the color much. You don't want to add so much, it's pink. But sometimes if you just add the tiniest amount of white, it makes your red paint a little thicker because the white pigment adds body to red. Red is sometimes a little more translucent and white is more opaque. There's some fancy art words for you. But sometimes just adding the teeniest amount of white to red helps it stand up better. Let's see if that's true. Yeah, look at the difference. So I'm not covering all the dark. I want the dark there. Bob Ross always used to say, you have to have dark to see the light. But just by having that dark behind it and the red in the front, that just makes it stand out and seem more alive. All kinds of painting tips today. You're gonna go to sleep tired and it's gonna be going in your head. But I hope you'll paint with me again learn tips every time. And sometimes you'll teach me tips too. That's how I learn. Indian paintbrush is a totally cool plant. Don't cover all your dark. Don't cover all your dark. You have to have dark to see the light. I might have added a little too much white, but that's okay. That's all right. Dang, there's a lot going on in this painting. This is one happy little painting. <laughs> you 
if I scheduled my teachers for a painting like this, they would clobber me. They like simple. So in these lavender ones, white looks really nice or yellow or a combination you decide. I'm going to take my smallest detail brush, the little round ones, and I'm going to sign my initials in the bottom right hand corner. And you can do it in any color that shows up. Whatever color you like, you decide, okay? Bob Ross does his in red in his shows, which I kind of like, but do it in any color you want. Uh, and I'm just doing my initials. If I see your initials in the bottom right hand corner when I see your painting in the Denver Art Museum, I'll know exactly who you are. <laughs> I'll be so proud of you. Oh, by the way, she also has some white, white flowers in hers. You decide. I'm putting yellow dots in my white flowers and I'm putting white dots in my purple and I'm going to put black in my red, but you can do whatever you want. This alone has a dot in the middle. We got wildflowers. We've got aspen trees. We've got a mountain. We've got grass. We've got foothills. We've got a sky. It's a busy painting, but it's beautiful. Just like Colorado is beautiful. And all of our art is made in-house. Um, we have about 500 different paintings that we teach from. They were all made by local Denver artists. So thank you for supporting the local Denver arts community. Yeah.